Okay. So uh, we're gonna go outside the usual. We're at Triple Crown, the end of Triple Crown, really. Yeah, unfortunately. Unfortunately, but I, I think, how long have you been in town? Four days now. Four days, yeah. having a blast. It's been amazing, yeah. I arrived on Wednesday, now it's Saturday evening, so it's a uh, yeah, great convention so far. Fantastic. Now, a, a lot of folks in YouTube land might not know who you are. Yeah. So, just introduce yourself, if you don't mind. Well, in that case, uh, I'm Daniel, Daniel Confederline from Germany. I'm very much into catfish, into plecos, quarries, and all that stuff. And uh, yeah, well, I'm, I was here to, to give a talk about cichlids, live beers, and killifish. Nobody wanted to hear about my catfish, so that's why I'm very, very lucky that you finally asked me <laughs> to talk about like my real passion. And, and, and to be clear, Chris Biggs basically said, you have to do this. Yeah. This is one of the, the best young scientists in our yeah. field. Well, I'm thankful to Chris that he said that. We did a video on a similar topic maybe a few years ago mm -hmm. uh, for, for his channel. and yeah, we, But it was a very long video. I think we did two takes actually, and both were like 25 minutes. Okay. So that was uh, very, very extended. Yeah, so uh, we'll try to do maybe an abridged version. Yeah. But what is Unkali? Yeah, Unkali. It's like the magic word from tonight. It's basically, you have to imagine um, a sucking mouse catfish. Everybody knows the sucking mouse catfish, those bristlenose plecos, and they suck on glass, and they suck on stones, they suck on wood, they suck everywhere you want them to suck at. So, and basically, we always said uh, it's a sucking mouse, and they can create something like a vacuum. Well, that's simply wrong, because what they actually do is, they have those small structures called unculi. Unculi resemble small hook-like structures or teeth-like structures actually and they are attaching to all kind of surfaces thanks to a mixture of sucking but also and mainly that's important mainly um, because of adhesion thanks to these unkuli hook-like structures so they can actually if you imagine this is the surface of a stone and they can just hook on that stone they create um, a, a mucus type which they can secrete and that's where they use their own collision. Okay, so are they, I mean, how, how much are they digging? Are we talking like just almost imperceptible amounts that they're digging into those surfaces? Or? No, no, not at all. So, because um, those uncle types, they're very, very small. So we're talking about nanometers. It's nothing you can see with your bare eye. So normally we say, um, if you have the whole sucker mouse, mm -hmm. it's hierarchy level number one. And then they have those small papilla, which you can still see with your bare eye on the lower lip and also on the upper lip. But they are already very small. And on these papilla, which are hierarchy level number two, they have unculi. And you need a very, very good microscope, like a scanning electron microscope, to be able to see those structures. And they can't interfere with the base surface, but thanks, thanks to this mucus they create, and they kind of put it on that stone, for example, and they only interfere with that mucus, with that layer of mucus they created themselves. So there, there's wow. no real interaction with the structure itself. And is there, is there something in there that we could equate in, in something that's more like household understanding? Like, is this creating some kind of like two-part bond, like an epoxy almost, in a sense of no, how not, their, not their mucus is forming? So it's, it's, it's purely mechanical. Okay. So they're not gluing themselves, so they're not attaching thanks to glue. It's really purely mechanical adhesion. Okay. So it'd be like if, if I were to say like a grappling hook into something where it's, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's physically stuff. hooking in, period. Yeah, yeah. Right. That's super interesting. So let me let me ask you this. What led you down this path of research? Well, that's a good question. Yeah. Basically it was because um, well, I started with those blackouts when I was 10 years old. Okay. So like for the last 20 years, I didn't do much other stuff than only watching plecos. And they were always like, you, you know, when, when you keep them, right? They were always on the glass, they are on the stones. And every time you were doing some literature research, it always said, yeah, they create a vacuum and they are sucking on the structure. And the, But if you observe them every day and like every day, sometimes several hours, you realize that they're move, uh, moving their mouse in a way that they can't create actually a vacuum. So there has to be something else. And I was uh, looking for a bachelor thesis back that time and for a master thesis later on. 
And I was like, well, let's just do this because it's a combination of something I had to do with something I wanted to do. Yeah. So that was like the perfect solution for me. That's 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 super cool. Yeah, I like, enjoyed it a lot. I still enjoy it. So you know, I keep a few bristle nose, nothing too fancy. Um, yeah. I have the the Waba Mooster Pleco, which I, yeah, I love the honeycomb nice, bristle yeah. nose, and then I just have your kind of standard super red morph of a, a standard bushy nose. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I'm constantly I see them on the glass at night. Yeah. And and there's always you know that that kind of question of when they're when they're scooting along, how are they holding in place? Because yeah. if you're moving, and, you can't hold that, a vacuum. That interesting right? part is because they keep moving all the time, but at the, at the same time, they're grazing on that surface. So they're feeding and attaching and moving all at the same time, and they don't seem to have any problems with it. So they know how to do all at the same time, and that's just uh, that's pretty amazing. Yeah, that's a very complex kind of biomechanical it, engine. It, exactly. They have yeah, there. it is. Yeah. yeah. And those lower lips, for example, of a simple bushy nose or bristle nose black hair. We see them as like the cheapest and the easiest fish ever, but there are actually very complex morphology structures going on there. That's that's so cool. That's really cool, yeah. Uh, I just I'm kind of in awe because like I haven't heard that part, right? I'm yeah. I'm a super rainbow fish nerd. I kind of keep plecos very casually. I have friends that are my like more pleco experts because they're significantly more skilled with plecos yeah, than I yeah. am. Uh, but getting into this kind of like deeper science understanding and being able to put that into something that blows out the common perception of what we assume. Yeah. That's the interesting that's, part. Yeah. What, a, what a way to end Triple Crown for me. Yeah, yeah perfect. Dude, thank you <laughs> so much for your time. Yeah, glad. Uh, is really there, like where can folks find you? I mean, do you do anything with social media at all? Uh, Not at all, no. Well, or is I it just do, speaker I, tours that you're kind of yeah, doing? Well, I do have a Facebook while? page, but okay. it's more like like not like a real like social media platform for me so yeah. I, I do post some pictures from time to time but I, nothing else so I'm not on Insta Instagram no YouTube no nothing but are, you're slowly kind of getting around doing more speaking events yeah. yes well you, you, you can always get in contact with me like on conventions of course okay so I do like the, the personal contact like having a beer and having a chat like like we just had yeah so that's I, I do love that yeah. and if uh, if you had local fish clubs that were willing to get you over to them yeah. Would you speak at a fish club? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Ah. We just arranged a meeting in Canada for next year. So. Yeah, I'm gonna have to talk to my yeah. speaker coordinator for Greater Seattle Aquarium Society because I think it'd be fantastic to I'm get in, that yeah. in. I'm in. He's got a lot of a lot of pleco nerds there too. Yeah, and perfect, perfect. You might blow their minds. Yeah. And I I would love to watch it happen. Yeah, well, I'm in. Oh, fantastic. Just like that. <laughs> fantastic. Well, apparently I've got work to do now. Yeah. Again, great. Thank you, Daniel. Yeah, so you're much. very very welcome.